Hello everybody, it's Girl Next Door AC and welcome back! Today we're playing a game called Shrinking Pains. It's supposed to be a mental health related type of game and I I think that's pretty important right now, so let's get on with the game. Partner preference. I prefer men. So Did your ceiling always look like that? Lights slants in light slants in from the bedroom window, falling in stripes across the sheets. You can feel Taylor waking next to you. He yawns, stretches his limbs to fit the corners of his bed. Off the bed. His skin presses against yours, sweet in its accident, before he lays a kiss on your shoulder. Good morning, love. You hear feet pad across the floor as he leaves the room. You lie in bed for another hour checking your phone. After all, you don't have anywhere to be until tonight. There's a few messages from Yuto, your best friend, and a handful of notification from your various social media. None of it holds your attention long. No new messages. Eventually, you pull yourself out of the bed. It's harder than you remember it being. You join Taylor in the kitchen, and he's at the counter making coffee, already just for work. Hey boo! How are you feeling? I'm okay. You sure? Not looking great. Nah, I'm fine. His look- he looks worried. His delicate features tight in their- tight in their concern. He avoids your eyes. As long as you're sure. Would you like a coffee? Taylor asks, and then immediately starts to make you one, leaving you little choice. You've learned not to say no, it only makes him suspicious, and you don't want him to worry. He chatters to fill the silence as he pulls a mug from the shelf, boils the kettle, stirs in too much sugar when he thinks you're not looking, and when it's ready, Taylor places it firmly on the counter in front of you. Hello. You wrap your hands around the cup to appease him. It's his favorite, the one with an obscure pop culture reference. You never understood. Uh, it. <sighs> the one with the obscure pop culture reference. You never understand, no matter how many times he explains it. I'm looking forward to tonight. Do you remember? To, did you remember to make the booking? Of course, Blue Ginger, your favorite. Our favorite. He laughs when he corrects you. You like his laugh. You haven't heard it in a while. What time should I get? What time should I get there? 7:30. There's something brittle in Taylor's smile as he packs his lunch. He kisses you before he leaves, slow and steady. Happy two years, my love. This house feels lonely without him. You look at your coffee. You want to drink it, but part of you cowers at the smell, the warmth, the idea of it being inside you. When you're sure Taylor won't come back, you pour it down the sink. Oh, we're having a flashback. It's nice to be with you here. Thank you for organizing this. The waiter is nondescript when they slide to up to your table. You haven't eaten, eaten today. You'd like to keep it that way. You've sat in the kitchen for hours watching the day tick by as anxiety grips you tight, pressed itself into the nerves and synapses. You have to do this for him, you have to try. The menu makes your hand shake, so you hide them beneath the table. Grip the skin of your leg as your stomach clenches. You're doing this for him. Taylor orders, oblivious to your turmoil. You're good at hiding in plain sight. The waiter asks for your order. I'ma get salad. He smiles. Please, you don't deserve him. You make small talk while you wait. He tells you about work when you update him on Yuto. There's an easy intimacy to your exchange, which, ex which changes the moment food arrives. The conversation stutters, strains. You can't keep it up. Can't stop thinking of the food in front of you. You push it around the plate, attempting to make it smaller. You know you're not fooling him, but you're trying anyways. You stare at Taylor's plate. The quail carcass ripped apart, 
blood and butter coagulating beneath his bones. For a long moment, you wish you could be that open. He saw a piece of breast in delicately and brings it to his mouth. Meat went against his lips. You wish you were him, could lift fork to teeth and swallow down parts of an animal, parts of anything. Feel it heavy in your belly and the weight of something inside you. It makes you sick. You can't stop thinking about food, or the lack of food, or the promise of food, the smell, the feel of that fat of your thigh pressing together when you sit down, the fold where your stomach meets your legs. You'd be perfectly marbled. You'd be perfectly marbled, white and red under his knife. That's it. Oh, he's crying. When you meet his eyes, you're surprised to see he's crying. I can't do this. He stands up from the table, grabs his bag, exits the restaurant without looking back. You're not surprised when he leaves you that night. Did your ceiling always look like that? Hey! None of us have heard from you in a while. You okay? I'm fine. <laughs> nice try. I'm gonna come over, okay? Okay, let's... Sweet, I'll be there at 7. Okay, gotta work. See you soon. You wake to the sound of the front door closing. Did you fall asleep again? It can't possibly be 7 already. You can hear Yuta yelling from the kitchen. Are you seriously still sleeping? I'm unpacking the groceries. Your vision swims as you get out of bed. You put your hand to the wall, wait for it to clear. You wonder if it's meant to take this long. Yuta stands at the counter, half empty grocery bags. Yuta stands at the counter, half empty grocery bags laid out in front of him. You can see the shiny red capsicum nestled next to prepackaged sandwich. From another, the smell of roasting chicken wafts towards you, enticing and disgusting. Hey sleepyhead, how are you feeling? Actually, don't answer that. I know your shit. Sorry to hear about Taylor. I know you really loved him. You don't have to say anything to say. You don't have anything to say, so you remain quiet. It reminds you of being in the kitchen with him, voice chattering as he rummaged through the cup cupboards, his warmth in every corner of the room. You want to feel something, but you're empty. Lately, you're always empty. I know that you stop eating when you're stressed, so I brought the basics. Yuta continues, upturbedly by your silence. Upturbed? Fruit, veg, chicken, a little something off from every food to keep you going. Oh man, the chicken smells amazing. Do you want some now? You did not eat earlier, but I'm okay. Okay. I'm gonna help myself, is that okay? You nod. It would be rude to say no. Yuto busies himself ripping open the plastic packaging before reaching into the bag with his hands. He tells you about his day as he pulls off the herb skin, set in on a plate, set it on a plate. Updates you on your mutual friends as he twists off the drumstick, a thigh, the muscle white and pink greasy against his fingertips. Your stomach lurches. You're not sure if it's hunger or fear. Maybe both. All you know is that you want to be sick. Hey. Hey. Yuto looks unsettled. Half a thigh is gone. There's a spot of fat on his shirt. I'm worried about you. He says it softly, like he's half hoping you won't hear it. You reassure him that you're fine. He looks unconvin unconvinced but changes the subject. It's been a while since everyone's seen you. What are you doing tomorrow? Nothing. Great, it's my birthday. You should come. Where is it? At Blue Ginger, your favorite. It's like the air has been sucked out of your lungs. Panic. You watch the meat. Them watching you eat. Watching them watching you. Watching your plate. You can't. Can't you. Can't. Can't you. Can't you. Can't. Oh. Uh. Um. I don't think that will work. What? Why? I can't. Sorry. Yuta's mouth twists. His hands twist. He scrapes his left over into the bin and leaves. 
You don't remember the last time your fridge is full. You learned the lesson the last time you binged. Rice thins coated in expired condiments. You've been sick for days. Is it really worth it? Did your ceiling always look like that? Oops. Sorry I missed the party. Wasn't expecting to hear from you. We all missed you, hey? You okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. I'm out of town for this week, but I'll visit when I'm back. Okay, gotta go, reception's crap. <coughs> you spend long moments staring at the ceiling. Everything aches from your stomachs to your mouth to your bones. The sheets feel like pressing down against you, suffocating. You can't stay here. You only remember how you got here in stolen moments. His hands against your lower back. A drink ordered for you at the bar. Hunter, he said his name was. That you remember. That and the way he looked at you. Hunger in his eyes and resentment in the way he manhandled you out of the bar when you exposed your neck. The lights are on but nobody's home. Hunter swims into view. Ah, you remember now. He's gorgeous in the way that breeds complacency. He lights a cigarette with practice, I eat, with practice ease. Breathes in deep, lets the smoke marinate his lungs before he exhales. Trust me to go for the weird ones. He flicks the ashes onto the sheets. They graze your calf, and while you flinch, he laughs, low and mocking. He stubs out his cigarette on the bed next to you, close enough to feel the burn. He pins you down with ease. Yes, this is what you want. You don't want to think. You want him to find pleasure in the body you've been punishing for months. Please let it be good for something, anything. You shudder at the way he runs his palms around. He runs his palms along your rib cage like a xylophone. How he wraps his hands around your ankles to feel his fingertips meet. You lay back, weak as your legs are pulled open effortlessly. You lose moments in his whiskey sour breath, the scratch of his beard. You're so helpless. I love fucking skinnies. He whispers as he turns you onto your stomach and kisses every indent between your vertebrae. You'll have bruises for weeks. Hunter is smoking again, and you don't have the strength to roll over. Hey, I'm going to order a takeout. What do you want? I have to go. What's all? We have the room all night. What's the rush? I need to leave. You're still drunk and aching, but you pull yourself out of the bed. You're not sure whose clothes you grab, yours or his, but in record time, you're dressed. Even though, even, the thought of food scares you more than his kind, his easy kind of violence. You're in front of the fridge. Why are you in front of the fridge? You can feel semen slide down your inner thigh. You're filthy. Water. Get water down, girl. Water. It'll weigh you down. Slush in your belly. But you're drunk. You're allowed this, surely. Surely. Did your ceiling always look like that? You check your phone. How are you? Um, I'm fine. Are you okay? Yeah, I just wanted to know how you're doing. Still not sure about this. Haven't seen you in weeks. Where have you been working? That's a lie. You've been at home watching your unfamiliar ceiling. Well, I miss you. I'm here if you need me, okay? It's hard to hold the phone up. You should not be driving when you haven't eaten anything in probably weeks. Time stretches, time lags, you're not sure how you got here. You don't remember getting in the car, pulling out of the driveway, navigating the traffic lights near your home. You look down, look up, your vision swims, your hand shakes and slackens, unable to grip worn out leather. Your chest heaves but each breath is shallow, agonizing. Muscles weak, lungs weak, you're so weak. It's not the first time you've passed out at the wheel. No. 
You don't want to be here. The fridge is so cold, your skin crawls. You want to be nothing but skin. Bones and bare essentials. No. Eat nothing. Eat nothing. Did your ceiling always look like that? You check your phone. There's a message from someone that could only be you, though. You squint, trying to make out the letters. They're fuzzy. Unclear. Your fingers feel clumsy whenever you try to type out a word. Your tongue is heavy in your mouth, limbs like lead. Hands fall against the cover, phone spills to the floor. Did your ceiling always look like that? Yuto, Yuto is coming today. Did your ceiling always look like that? Oh. So, um, I don't know how quite to end this. That was a really quick game. A visual, a short visual novel of what mental illnesses actually do to people i don't want to say anything bad or i don't want to like conclude anything with the mental health portion of this game in a sense that i am not licensed to say anything but what i can say is that the insecurities of this girl or this person that i'm playing uh resulted into her starving herself out and and ending up in the hospital and i get that like we all have our insecurities some worse than others actually and there are people who battle mental illness as an illness like they can't help but feel this way they can't help but feel like they're not enough they're not they're not sexy enough they're not small enough especially we're a result of bullying and stuff and I understand where this story is coming from. There is no girl out there who isn't insecure about what she looks like. And there is no person out there who has no insecurities. So this is what that game is sort of pointing out. How bad mental illnesses get. Like, I can personally, personally relate to it to the point where you'd starve yourself i get that i did that for so many days and it just harmed my body more than it did good just like how this girl ended up in the hospital at one point i got super sick and i had to go to the hospital because i was not eating so much uh, my body did not react well to the fact that i wasn't eating so much so yeah i actually get this story and a lot of people actually go through something like this like People who have been bullied in the past, they go through something like this, especially when it comes to their body. Like somebody's gonna start bullying out their body, or they feel like, or somebody out there made them feel like it was because of that. It's because of their physical appearances that they don't deserve love, or they don't deserve this and that. They have to change. They have to go thinner and stuff. And although it wasn't really shown here in the story, it does seem like somebody who is dealing with the aftermath of such things because she feels she felt like she, her body was not enough and she just actually watched everybody slowly walk out of her life and yeah, that's it's really sad when somebody when that happens to somebody and if you're experiencing this you should really reach out to a professional for help or you know if you're feeling depressed or down or you feel like you're stuck in a sinkhole and you can't help it like you find food disgusting you can't find the will to stand up take a bath and take care of yourself i suggest you take your time in healing you do little things to make you feel better like when you get up and you feel like you can't shower you can't stand up from the bed and you feel like the whole room is messy you sit up you fix your sheets even if it's just your sheets one at a time just do it and st 
bit by bit each day you're going to do a little bit of something for yourself even if it's just one thing and then let that pile up over and over and over and this will help you at least try to cope up with the situation and hopefully it will bring you the energy it will bring you the will to go seek for help because you really should look for help with a professional to talk to when you're going through something like this because because there is more to life than where you are right now like there's more to life than that sinkhole you're in there's more to life than that that dark place that you're in and i know that's such a stupid thing that's such a silly thing that's such a ironic thing to listen to right now especially if you're in that place but i can say that because i've been there like i have been in a sinkhole where i thought that life was so sh and that this was it this is it. i just want to die and i have days where it goes back to that that thought never goes away the thought where you just want to give up on life the thought where food is disgusting i still have that problem up until today i hate food i can't help it but i have to take care of myself because it's such a silly thing to hear especially if you're in a dark place right now that loving yourself doesn't have to be in big ways it can be in small ways like eating a pack of nuts or or drinking a cup of water like i've been there and i still deal with the aftermath of the things i feel today like the things i felt today there are some days where you just kind of wake up and it's just the world is just really bad especially like like the world itself is bad right now but the world up here is worse like you just can't find the will to live today and stuff and i get that and there are some people who experience that much much worse than others do but as somebody who's been there as somebody who thought that my life was over who's ended in the hospital because of that who's done stupid shit in their life i can say that there is more to life than that there is more to life than this problem, this phase, this sinkhole that you're in. And you will get out of it eventually. You just, just don't give up. Just keep seeking out for help. Keep loving yourself because, because you're worth it. Because you're you. And I know you might hate yourself for that, but you're you. That's the most wonderful thing about you that there is. And... Nobody can take that away from you, no matter what anybody says. So, if you're in this position right now, please seek for help. Talk to somebody. Talk to one of your friends. Let them, let them help you. Let people help you. And let people love you. And let yourself love you because you really deserve that, okay? So yeah, just keep holding on and I promise you'll get through this. So yeah, and I think that's it for this game because it tackled a really dark topic that, you know, is like a, a really famous topic now and I'm kind of like so scared that I might say something I shouldn't. But I'm just speaking from my experiences. I don't have any degrees or anything for this. I just wanted to, you know, at the end of the video, I wanted to share a little bit of my experiences and how I got off that and how I'm telling you guys that you guys got this like just keep repeating that you got this even though you don't got it that day just say you got this you power through and you just keep going because bad days are always there as long as one good day happens all those bad days doesn't don't matter anymore okay so all those good days don't matter anymore and that you matter and that's the only thing that matters okay so yeah uh, I'm gonna end this video here because I might say something I shouldn't. <laughs> There's a lot more to say for this topic, but I feel like I'm rambling on a bit too much about it. So, yeah. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more games, more content, you just don't want to feel alone, you want to hear somebody talk in the background like an idiot. <laughs> and comment down below if you want to make friends with people in my community or you need 
somebody to talk to. I'm gonna try my best to reach out to you and yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!